Jim! Jack, what time is it? Bull killing time! What time is it? Bull killing time! I didn't hear you the first two times. What time it's is it? Bull killing time till the sun goes down! Awesome. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. This is going to be a great episode with Jason Phelps of Phelps Game Calls, and this is going to be a four part series. And we're going to go everything, go over everything from the mechanics of uh, how to make a, a, a sound out of a diaphragm. We're going to go through uh, how to make a sound out of an external reed, a bugle. Uh, and then we're going to get even more advanced. We're going to talk about the actual characteristics of each call and how the calls are made and how the calls are stretched. Uh, we're going to talk about the little tricks of the trade of how to make each individual call sound better. Um, and Jason's going to do a lot of demonstrating for us on cow calling, uh, how he likes to bugle, uh, how he likes to chuckle, how he likes to grunt. And so this is going to be a great four-part series. And I know the listeners, are gonna, you guys are going to get a, a great, bill, great bit of... Uh, uh, value out of it. So I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Uh, before we get to that, I want to thank my sponsors. Uh, I want to thank uh, GoHunt.com uh, Insider, and I want to announce that there's a real special uh, promo that uh, GoHunt.com Insider is doing for the J. Scott Podcast listeners, and that is it's a 30-day free trial exclusive for the J. Scott uh, outdoors podcast listeners all you have to do is go to gohunt.com forward slash j scott and click on the blue free trial button and go through the steps it only takes a couple of minutes you'll be required to provide a credit card but they will not be charged until after the free 30 days you can cancel any time within the first 30 days to prevent being charged if you guys have any questions at all about the free trial at uh, Go Hunt, you can go to free trial at GoHunt.com and someone from the Go Hunt team will promptly respond. So this is your opportunity. If you've been listening over the last uh, year about me talking about uh, GoHunt.com Insider, this is your chance for a 30-day free trial to go on and check out the filtering 2.0 system. Check out the draw odds. Check out how they do get their harvest statistics. Check out the mapping. Check out how they can break down each unit. Um, it and uh, check for the local area services. You basically have a free run at uh, checking out uh, the unbelievable resource at Go Hunt Insider. So uh, again, go to gohunt.com forward slash J Scott. Click on the blue free trial button and go through the steps. And uh, it's a free trial. So go check it out. I want to thank GoHunt.com Insider for their sponsorship. Uh, they've been the title sponsor of my podcast since the beginning. I would also like to uh, thank Western Hunter and Elk Hunter magazines. They also have a promotion going right now. If you go to WesternHunter.net forward slash J Scott. And enter your, you'll be prompted to go to a page 
when you get to that page it'll say enter an email address if you enter your email address uh, you'll be entered into the drawing they're giving away July 15th a uh, $1,500 credit towards Swarovski Optics through another sponsor of the J Scott Outdoors podcast the Outdoorsman's all you have to do is enter your email address. Again, go to westernhunter.net forward slash jscott. Enter your email address once it, you go to the prompt. And uh, one person is going to win a $1,500 credit towards any Swarovski product. I want to thank Western Hunter and Elk Hunter Magazines for their support. I uh, also want to thank phonescope.com. If you go to phonescope.com, uh, you get 10% off if you mention the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Uh, also, if you go to the Outdoorsman's or call the Outdoorsman's at 1-800-291-8065. Uh, if you call the Outdoorsman's or you go on uh, their website, use the J. Scott promo code, uh, you're going to get 10% off all products at the Outdoorsman's as well. I uh, also want to thank Utah Hydrographics, and there's a two-tiered system of uh, a discount. Um, you can go to Utah Hydrographics, check it all out. You can get any; They can dip anything in ver Kuyu Verde camo or virtually any camo pattern out there. Um, and uh, there's substantial discounts by using the J. Scott promo code and also Wilderness Athlete. Um, proud to uh, have Wilderness Athlete as a sponsor, and if you use the J. Scott promo code, you get a 10% discount. So, guys, without those sponsors, this podcast wouldn't be possible. I appreciate uh, you guys uh, supporting them. I get feedback from my sponsors every day, uh, how much support you are giving them, and for that, I appreciate it. Uh, also, uh, I would love to I love getting feedback every day from the listeners. You can email me at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. Uh, I'm going to be uh, launching uh, several episodes where I'm answering uh, the listeners' questions. I've already done uh, one briefly, and uh, I've got great response from that. So jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. Send me any questions or anybody you want to hear on the podcast. Uh, I get uh, multiple emails, Facebook messages, Instagram messages, text, phone calls every day from listeners, and uh, that's just awesome. I thrive on that. Uh, I want to make this podcast the most informative and educational uh, experience that I can. Uh, if I don't know the answer to it, I will find someone that does, and we will get to the bottom of it together. I just want to thank all you guys for um, just just unbelievable support. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, make sure to go to jscottoutdoors.com. That website is uh, uh, under construction right now, but you can kind of see all the different things that Craig Steele at CS Creativity is doing. Uh, he's uh, revamping and centralizing everything. So it's basically you can go to jscottoutdoors.com. You'll be able to click on Instagram, my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, uh, all my different blogs, uh, right? And, and of course, uh, th this podcast, um, you can listen to the podcast right on the website. You can link out to iTunes. You can link out to Podbean. Um, so it's uh, he's doing a great job, and uh, there'll be more and more content put on there as the days go by. So make sure to check out jscottoutdoors.com. Also, um, I'm, I'm making a transition in Facebook um, to posting content on the J. Scott Outdoors business page. So just go to J. Scott, type in J. Scott Outdoors, come like my Facebook page. Uh, I'm maxed out on my personal page, and um, we're moving all, uh, pretty much all the content uh, over to J. Scott Outdoors business page. Guys, again, thanks for your support. Uh, I, I hope you really enjoy this four-part series with Jason Phelps of Phelps Game Calls. We've both been talking so much. I don't know. You might have to take a swig of water, but <laughs> let me hear your challenge bugle. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so boom, that's your challenge bugle. Yep. Do you have what you would call a locator bugle too? That's more just you're just trying to see who's in the neighborhood, what's around, see if a bull will answer. Yeah. So on my locator bugle, because sometimes a bull may be close to me, I don't necessarily want to initiate uh, uh, initiate that bull coming in yet. You know, I don't want to be, you know, with lack of a better word, caught with my pants down at the time or give him a chance to run away. You know, I want to I want to put some thought into my decision. So on a locator bugle, it's really um, non-aggressive. It's just a two or three note, uh, high note, and then I usually don't add much voice in. I'll kind of pop it at the end just to kind of throw it. But what I'm really trying to do with my locator bugle is get high, get that high pitch, and it's a high pitch that you can basically hear ring in your ears. It, it annoys you. It makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up, and it's just that really high ear-piercing pitch. And that's typically my locator beagle. And I try to do that every 200 yards or, you know, every time I get to a new finger ridge or, you know, anywhere along the way that I, that I may be presented new elk, I want to try to, to let that locator off. I feel there's no harm being done by locating, you know, more often than not. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, um, let me ask you a couple quick questions. What are your number one selling mouth bugle calls? Um, the boss and the beast, the boss was last year. And then I would say the beast is probably taking over this year. Um, and the dragon slayer has always been very, very consistent and very, very close, um, in sales to the, to the boss. And now I think this year between those three, they're probably splitting a little more cells, but, uh, those three, the boss, the beast and the dragon slayer are all kind of right there. Um, and are those all multiple read calls? Yep. The Dragon Slayer's the two and a half read with a, a, the ghost cut out of it. And then the Beast and the Boss are both double reads with V notches out of them. Okay. And what are your top selling cow calls? Uh, the Elk Commander and the Signature Cow. Um, the Signature Cow is, is a designated cow call. Very, very few guys will ever be able to bugle on it. Um, you know, there are some that can, and then the elk commander is a, is a really light, loose, a light latex. It's stretched a little bit tighter than the signature cow. It allows you to, to bugle a lot easier, but it doesn't hold up to grunts and chuckles very well. Um, so the elk commander is, is the call I tell a lot of people to learn on. Um, just don't get frustrated when you can't, you know, do big, deep grunts with it. Okay, and then as far as external, I know you have a handful of external calls. What are some of your top selling externals? Yeah, by far the Easy Estrus um, is my best selling external. I also have the Director, um, which I I still have the molds and everything to it, but I phased it out. It was just a cumbersome call to build. Um, I really liked it because it was really really soft for guys that wanted a, a little bit quieter call than my Easy Estrus. Um, but right now I'm just running with two. I'm actually in the process of getting uh, a new one made. Um, it's a little bit different than anything else I've seen. And so we're pretty excited, but that's most likely going to be a, a next year's release. Awesome stuff. Well, um, we've covered a lot of ground today, and I really appreciate you spending time with us here. And uh, it's been awesome watching uh, you progress uh, as a caller um you know you get better and better every time i i i hear you and um you're a fantastic caller great guy and you obviously make great calls um and it was also um you know you you killed tell me about this bull that you killed that was an extra or you know an extraordinary bull <laughs> uh for where you killed it and and um Tell the listeners a little bit about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll start off. It was I used to hunt um, Cascade Roosevelt's here, which if you draw a line which follows up I-5, west of I-5, at least within our own state in the Pacific Northwest big game, west of I-5 is a true coast to Roosevelt. The area between the Pacific Crest Trail and I-5, they have a designation called Cascade Roosevelt, which you get up in the mountains a little bit more, hunt alpine um, bulls. We went out there and hunted a few years in 08 and 09 and ended up just coming home halfway through the season and killing um, coastal Roosevelt's. Um, in 2012, um, we had really bad fire danger here and basically got kicked off of, you know, or, or locked out of the country we were hunting. And we ended up going back up to our old stomping grounds that we had hunted um, back then. I had 
we I went with a partner that I'd never ever elk hunted with. We had three days left and uh, went up in there, climbed up into the basin that we were hunting, and uh, instantly within you know two seconds of throwing my binoculars up, I had spotted a cow. And while I was watching her, it was almost surreal and, and not real um, watching this bull walk into view, um, you know, checking on her. Uh, and instantly, you know, you go into game plan mode. It's a s- second to last day of season. And uh, we pull the GPS out, figure out a way to drop into this basin from the opposite side where we had the wind right. And we were there within half an hour. I was actually not supposed to be the shooter this day. I was going to call for my buddy. Um, he had kind of pigeonholed himself into a, a row of um, subalpine trees that basically was like an impenetrable wall. He couldn't see in or out. And I called this bull into 50 yards from me and only 10 yards from him. And, and that bull sat there for probably three minutes. And he had one of the most ear-piercing, deep, thunderous bugles ever. And my buddy got the fortune of listening to it from 10 yards away with no shot. And that day, um, he was going to turn. And I was literally only, you know, I don't know how far I was away at that time because I never range found him. I had the time to knock an arrow, though, and get an open shot. Um, and I guessed it, uh, for 55, he was only 45 with a little bit of a downhill and I shot right over him. And I can remember just being sick, you know, by far the biggest bull I'd ever seen on the hoof, especially in my home state of Washington and spent the next day, uh, or that night looking for him. Um, we were fortunate enough to go back up in there. There were some other hunters in that area. And as soon as they left, I hit one of my high pitched locators and those guys had beagled their way all the way through the basin. And he responded to us coming up our side of the mountain. And we knew we didn't have enough time. So we backed out, went to camp and came back in the morning. And, uh, it was meant to be, we, I actually didn't call him in. I, I did beagle twice, but I, I don't credit that to calling him in. He actually was making all the music for us that morning. And, uh, we, we peeked up over a, a rock bluff that was probably a 40 foot bluff and there he was sitting in the meadow below it and we i eyed to my buddy let's draw um you know let's back up draw we'll both peek up and on the count of three we'll we'll both shoot and we both had tags it was the last day there was no sense in not both getting a chance and we get up there and we count to three and i was going to actually shoot second and my buddy never shot and you know it's we're both at full draw you get to what seems like forever it was probably only really three and a half and i can realize that uh his arrow had fell off of his rest and he was trying to lift it up with his finger and uh it, we were fortunate we had played the guess that range game from that exact spot the night before you know just sit there and range everything around you and and he was 42 yards away, and uh, probably by the time we, it would have been four, I had centered my pin uh, on his chest and let the arrow go, and he didn't make it more than about 70 yards. And, uh, you know, it, it's truly a once-in-a-lifetime bull, especially for Washington State, and uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun trying to kill him bigger and not the rest of the year. He ended up being a 7x7 seven seven that scored right, at, right under 370 um, for a Cascade Roosevelt. And at the time I killed him, uh, you know, he was ended up being he was third all time in the state behind a few, um, you know, few watershed bowls where you have to draw tags for. But this was just a general over the counter type bowl. And, uh, you know, it was just it was an awesome hunt. I got to um, share the the retrieval and the pack out with all my uncles and dad that I grew up uh, you know, elk hunting with. And it was just a great time. And uh, uh, I hope to I hope everybody can experience that feeling. You know, it was, it shouldn't be any different than killing all the raghorns I had killed before that, or the, you know, the, the semi-mature bulls, but it was, it, there was just something special about, you know, taking a bull of that quality. And uh, it was truly once in a lifetime, but I hope I get to live it two or three times in a lifetime. For sure. That's an awesome story. And it's an incredible bull. And um, my hat's off to you for, for uh, sticking with it and getting it done, and and it was you know one of those days. It was just your your day to to shine. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure there's some great ribbon between you and your buddy on that whole deal. Yeah. And, um, but uh, that that's that's fantastic to stick with the bull like that, and yeah. you know g- you know get back on him and and get it done. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, congratulations with all the success of your call company. Um, and I know our listeners are going to really enjoy this episode, uh, or the, these, this, this two part series episode. So, um, with that being said, buddy, 
uh, want to give you a chance to let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Okay, yeah, I mean the the best way is you know if you if you just want to purchase calls, the website is www.phelpsgamecalls.com. Um, the other thing is uh, I'm I'm very active on social media, whether it's through Facebook, uh, Instagram. Get a hold of me on there. Instagram is at Phelps Game Calls. Um, Facebook, I run a, my personal and my business page, and that's really one of the things. I, you know, a lot of guys hate about the business is answering emails. I just love the interaction and trying to get people into the right calls, even if it isn't my call. That's I, I try to be the guy that knows about every bugling bull call, every primos call, every you know berry game, call, whatever call it is. I, I have stacks and stacks around here, and if I think that what you're describing to me would be better suited for somebody else's call, I take pride in being that guy to recommend you know what's going to work best for you, not just put you in one of my calls. Uh, but yeah, feel free to reach out to me. Um, a lot of times, you know, I, I'm one of the, uh, I'm a younger generation guy. If you email me, a lot of times you're going to get a text back, you know, within an hour or two and, and we'll just handle it that way. It's easier and more efficient for me. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to get a hold of me through the website, social media. Um, and, and through that, you'll eventually get my phone number and we can you know deal with stuff and, and answer questions that way. That's fantastic. Uh, it's good stuff. Um, yeah, buddy. Well, good luck uh, with your season coming up. Um, uh, hopefully, maybe you draw Idaho. And, uh, yeah, I've got a, a elk tag right and staring me in the face. I It's been 10 years since I've actually killed a bull myself. I haven't drawn a tag and finally got one in Utah. So I'm pretty excited to um, get to shoot one myself here. It's been a little while and um, I've got a great unit in the beaver there in That's awesome. um, Utah. So I'm, I'm uh, all systems go, been shooting my, my bows and um, been, uh, you know, um, really hiking and trying. I want to be in tip top shape when I hit that yeah. uh, hunt. So um, I'm, yeah. I'm anxious to see if you've if uh, you follow through with your wife's recommendation on killing a little one for me, or I have a feeling if I know you good, it's you're gonna you're gonna have to ask for forgiveness from your wife. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm uh, I don't. I don't mind chewing a little bit extra on on a little bit of tough meat. I'm. I'm definitely gonna go and try and get as you know good a bull as I can get. And you know sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm gonna have a great time doing it. And. You know, like I said earlier, I, I enjoy elk calling. I enjoy the sport of, of elk hunting. And uh, I am a trophy hunter also. Um, so I'm, I'm you know, I've been fortunate to kill some really big bulls. And, um, you know, I think part of the fun of, of elk hunting is getting to enjoy a long hunt and trying to pick over a lot of bulls and, and uh, you know, shoot, shoot a good one. And, um, the likelihood of me shooting something bigger than what I've already shot is highly unlikely, but, um, <laughs> you know, just, just, just trying to get a good bull for that area and more importantly, enjoy the sport of elk hunting, um, and have some, hopefully some great calling interactions and, uh, just have a great experience is kind of what I'm after. So I appreciate you spending all this time with us and, uh, congratulate you on your success Thank you. And I guess until I see you next time, buddy, God bless you. And uh, I'll be watching. I follow you on Instagram and and um, you, you do a great job. So keep it up. Thank you, Jay. Good luck. And uh, we'll stay in touch for sure. All right, buddy. Take care. Take care.